Welcome to our latest Wondering Walks of Wonder Museum tour. Today we're headed to the Willowark Museum just outside Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Willow Rock is a unique museum and wildlife preserve that was founded by Frank Phillips, the founder of Phillips Petroleum Company. That's why in our first stop here of our tour, we see this old Phillips 66 station. In case you're wondering, the name Willow Rock comes after the surrounding landscape features, woods, lakes, and rocks. The Willow Rock Museum had a very small beginning. It was initially constructed in 1929 to house what was the Willow Rock Airplane, which we'll see a little bit later on in this, in this tour. As Frank Phillips expanded his art collection over the years, the idea of converting his private holdings into a public museum took root. As we enter the museum, we see these large mosaics that are crafted from thousands of tiny glass pieces set against that sky blue background. They represent five large Native American figures. These figures represent a diverse cross-section of Native Ameri American cultures from three major cultural regions in the United States. As we enter the museum, we're entering the rotunda where we see a floor made of Terrizo marble in five different colors that showcase a pattern that's very reminiscent, reminiscent of a Navajo sand painting. At the center of the rotunda stands a statue of Frank Phillips, the visionary oil man, oil man who conceived and developed Wooler Rock. The museum, as we'll see as we go throughout, is designed and planned to tell a story. And in each room, we'll see an era that's been covered or a time period in a broad chronological pattern from the earliest man in the New World to today. In fact, the first room that we're entering now is known as the Dawn of History. This room focuses on the archaeology of the New World. This collection features an abundance of artifacts from the renowned Spiral Mound in LaFleur County, Oklahoma, including a model, model village. Additionally, we see two cases filled with archaeological materials from Peru, including a mummy and a collection of shrunken heads from South America. The story continues on in this room with uh, artifacts from the last ice age. The exhibits here primarily showcase the archaeological evidence of cult cultures found in what is now present-day Oklahoma. Among the highlights that we see as we go through this particular part of the exhibit is a privately owned dinosaur egg, uh, one of only a few dinosaur eggs that are privately owned in the world. There's also many paintings that we'll see throughout this exhibit, as well as uh, various artifacts from Pueblo Indians. Thank you. 
dedicated to the spiral mound. These are located roughly 10 miles outside of Fort Bulldog and Bella in the mound spiral. There's a state park there. And the spiral was Cato Indians, actually. They lived there from 750 AD to roughly 1300 AD. Uh, it was located in a strategic trading spot where the, the mound, 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 the mound,
we now move into the Indian Territory realm. With the arrival of the horse from Europe, the Plains Indians became nomadic hunters following the herds of bison as they roamed the vast sea of grass in the continent center. Part of this great hunting ground was later, later designated as Indian Territory, which would one day become the state of Oklahoma. This room highlights the blending of cultures during westward expansion and the resettlement of Native Americans to Indian Territory. On display, one of the paintings we see by Robert Lindo is called Trail of Tears, which commemorates the suffering of the Cherokee people during their forced removal from the eastern parts of the United States. This room also features a variety of artifacts, including war bonnets, Chippewa beadwork, parflesh boxes of the Plains Indians, and Delaware Big House ceremonial objects. We also see Seneca mask, Pawnee dance costumes, Wyandotte mortars, Comanche buckskin, and a beautiful teepee robe that belonged to Cheyenne Chief, Cheyenne Chief Black Kettle. Before Oklahoma achieved statehood, cowboys drove herds of longhorn cattle from Texas to the railheads in Kansas, stopping in the lush grasslands of Indian Territory to let the herds graze. 
This room that we're looking at now depicts the cowboy way of life featuring an authentic chuck wagon display, a series of branding irons, and saddle saddles from notable places like the famous 101 Ranch. It also features a full-size stagecoach that traveled over 625,000 miles between Fort Logan and Dorsey, Montana from 1869 to 1912. In this room, there is also a collection of the 101 Ranch's $10,000 Wild West saddle adorned with silver, gold, and precious jewels, as well as Buffalo Bill saddling guns, a saddle used by Teddy Roosevelt, and the first saddle owned by actor Tom Mix. Go ahead. <laughs> Our next room that we're going to is called the Cavalcade of History. This room portrays the lives of pioneers who settled in the country and their interactions with Native Americans. In this room we see the 12 original bronze models submitted for the Pioneer Women Memorial that's in Ponca City, Oklahoma alongside works of art by master artist Charles Russell as well as Frederick Remington.
The next room is all about an airplane. It's the Woola Rock airplane and actually is the basis for the museum here as this room was one of the first that was designed just to showcase this airplane. The Woola Rock airplane was the winner of the 1927 Pacific Air Race from California to Hawaii. It was retired here to the ranch in 1929 and exhibited in that small stone building that would later become the museum that we see today. As we've been learning, Woola Rock was founded by Frank Phillips, who was the founder of Phillips Petroleum Company. And as we head downstairs here, we start seeing what is called the oil patch. This is actually a room that talks about how Frank Phillips got involved in the oil industry, as well as some of the items related to Phillips Petroleum Company. This part of the room explores the history of Phillips between 1850 and 1950 when oil was the most significant in the state of Oklahoma. One of the houses that we see here, a representation of a house, is what's called a lease house that oil workers and their families would often call home. We also see horse-drawn oil wagons, vintage gasoline trucks, an 1895 rope tool rig, and a working pump jack that illustrates just exactly how oil was extracted from the ground. Thanks to the generous donation of Phil Phillips and Waldo Wilson, Woola Rock boasts one of the finest collections of Colt firearms in the world. This collection is notable for including some of the earliest revolving cylinder repeating weapons made in the United States, and it also traces the development and history of Colt fire firearms into the post-World War II era. In this room, we also find the Russell Strait collection of Winchester rifles, a firearm closely associated with the history of, well, the West. Additionally, this room also gives us a unique opportunity to take a glimpse behind the curtain into a back room where rare and unique items not typically on display at Woola Rock can be viewed.
This room explores the history of Frank Phillips in a little bit more detail. It showcases the history and the origins of not only Royal Rock, but Phillips Petroleum Company. It also features a recreation, a recreation of Mr. Phillips' New York office, complete with the original desk, chairs, and other furnishings from which he managed Phillips Petroleum Company. We're now heading into the memory lane room. This room is designed for kids of all ages and it features antique dolls, toys, games, as well as Phillips 66 memorabilia. Central to the room is a double track HO or uh, O scale interactive train complete with historic buildings and landmarks from the area.
Before there was a museum, Frank Phillips built this small cabin here as a retreat for himself and his family to enjoy the outdoors and get away from the business of the world. From its modest beginnings as a small cabin, the Woolerock Lodge Ranch evolved into a country home of both Frank and Jane Phillips. Construction on the home began in 1925 that started with a really small cabin that served as the lodge dining room. But by early 1927, just a few years later, the house was completed with over eight bedrooms, six guest rooms, and two separate adjoining rooms for Frank Phillips' Uncle Frank and Aunt Jane, each with their own bathroom. The house also included a servant's room with a connecting bathroom to Frank Phillips' room. I hope you've enjoyed this wandering walk of Wonder Tour here at the Wooler Rock Museum in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and we will see you on our next Wandering Walks of Wonder adventure. Take care now. Bye-bye.